Okay. Um, thank you, Catherine. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the sort of role of covering everything else, uh, <laughs> i.e. Most of, most of the country. Um, and actually, on top of that, later on, getting to kind of a lot more of the kind of going down the route of more of the design stuff as well, which I want to talk about as well. So actually quite a lot um, around this that relates to some of the talks we've had already. Um, so as, uh, as we mentioned, um, I'm part of ODI Devon, uh, and I think we're the first rural node for, for the ODI. Uh, and basically, uh, even though we're actually based in Exeter, which is a city, uh, we actually are taking the county as a remit, which is a very interesting challenge, uh, partly because we have to start reaching out to a quite widespread community in terms of communicating the kind of stuff that we're doing, uh, but also because the challenges are different as well as the same, and so there's other things that we need to kind of consider. So one of the obvious things here is to start saying, um, is this about smart rural? You know, are we just saying, no, it's not smart cities, it's smart rural? Uh, and actually, there are smart rural initiatives all over the world, uh, places like Catalonia, um, there's Smart Catalonia and there are things and themes within that, some of which are the same as the challenges that cities face, but some of which are different. Uh, for instance, there's things going on to do with drone mapping for agriculture. There's kind of different things around technology and land that relate to smart cities but also have their own completely unique perspective. But the problem with Smart Rural uh, as a, an idea, as a topic, is it suggests that everything outside of a city is basically a field. Um, which isn't really true. Uh, and so even though it sounds like a great way to kind of set that apart, actually what we're talking about when we talk about the kind of stuff that ODI Devon has to look at, the kind of stuff that's of interest to us, is something about how we look at the land as a whole and start to think about um, basically what we're looking at when we look at not just cities but towns and villages and agricultural land. In other words, when we talk about smart everything, when we're joining everything up, what do we have to start to think about? What sort of things do we need to consider? And so kind of those things are what I want to talk about here in terms of how we think differently from just the city as an enclosed thing into something different. Um, so as I mentioned, first of all, lots and lots of stuff about things outside of cities are exactly the same. They need roads, they need infrastructure, they need energy. They need lots of the things that smart initiatives are actually concerned with, that they are actually the, the, the features of smart cities, and there's a similar kind of technology. But as I mentioned before, there are also very different things. Um, there are different concerns. There are things more to do with agriculture and the land and all those kind of things, and actually a lot more to do with things around climate, environmental, oceans, coasts, all of these kind of things relate to this. How does this kind of stuff fit together? So we kind of open out from one kind of set of contained challenges within smart cities, and I know obviously smart city stuff is very complicated, but adding extra layers of complexity here. We're adding in other things in this kind of consideration that we need to think about. Um, and it's this complexity that I think is really interesting. When we get to this level of complexity, I mean obviously we've had some talks here about thinking about cities, and that's come down to, say, a number of different topics that we have to deal with, thinking about street level and neighbourhoods and some of the kind of things that we've heard about. When we open out to smart technologies across everything, um, then we get into a completely different level of complexity, and we have to start thinking about what is it to go beyond this idea of cities, of a, com of a, of a space, a particular defined space, into something much wider. Um, and I think that's a really interesting thing because one of the things that I've kind of noticed about the way that the whole sort of smart city stuff has worked and kind of things that I've looked at and sort of some of the places I've been, you know, the Smart City Expo is a good example of this that happened in Barcelona um, kind of recently, is that it's quite, um, almost quite brand-led. Um, when we think about smart cities, a lot of the stuff that you see is very brand-led in the sense that this is about the initiative of Leeds or Manchester or London. Um, you know, we're talking about smart cities and it becomes a kind of almost a, a contained space within which there's a brand and this is how we're doing our own thing and this is how we're doing it and we're doing it better than maybe another city. I don't know how much the competition is between them but it's very much that we see these as separate things and even the kind of rankings when we hear about smart cities, we hear about which is the top smart city, we hear which is the greenest smart city. So there's very much that whole idea of city walls still within smart city infrastructure. And for me, I think the really interesting thing about including things outside of cities is that we have to start thinking about things differently from these kind of enclosed things. So we have to find a different scale, different ways of working, different ways of kind of bringing this stuff together. 
Um, so to come back to design uh, and design being one of the ways that we explore this kind of human level thing, I think the whole human level thing here is really fascinating and really useful for us to consider because this gives us a scale at which we can kind of say this is the point of reference for smart initiatives. And it doesn't matter where we are or what we're doing, um, we can start to have a frame of reference which is the human being in this whole reference of smart technologies. And once you start to go down this route, you start to come into areas of design that actually maybe are more relevant to this. Um, there's an area of design called open design, which I think is a really fascinating uh, whole perspective. And I'd like to just kind of use this point here to just give a little bit of an insight into this and what this is about and how I think this is particularly relevant. Um, we had an example from Dan about WikiHouse. Um, now, WikiHouse is a really interesting project in the sense that it's starting to explore this whole idea of a shared understanding of different ways of architecture in the, in the circumstances of WikiHouse. What is it like when we put up today a platform where people can start to determine, design, create their own infrastructure, when they can start to actually think about what kind of things they want to see built, they want to have, and what they do. And there's a very interesting kind of level down there that I think is a level at which not only is open data consumed, but open data is produced. And I think what happens is we get down to a particular level with this, which enables us to look at getting around the whole complexity of the issue. So instead of starting to think about, when we have to think about a very top-down approach, when we have to design and plan everything ourselves as organizations, as agencies, as institutions, we have a certain difficulty of the complexity of that issue. When we start to look at different kind of routes in terms of how we enable people to design for themselves what they want, what is important, what infrastructure they need, what data matters to them, um, you start to get to a level where actually that different approach allows you to take a kind of different look at it. Um, and I think there's something very interesting in this whole process. Um, there was an event earlier this week, um, which I think is a particularly interesting event because basically what this event was about was citizen science. Uh, and the really interesting thing about citizen science is what you realize is that there's all these little pockets of interest, there's all these little pockets of things that matter to individual people, um, that they will put a huge amount of time and effort into pursuing and exploring uh, because they want to do it for themselves. Um, some of the examples from the whole citizen science thing, a lot of it was around environmental stuff. So people were getting, we've talked about kind of uh, sensors in cities, people were strapping really ugly things to their arms while they were cycling around because it mattered to them about the air quality. People were downloading things, they were building their own material, they were building their own devices so that they could actually go out and monitor things that mattered to them. Uh, and you start to get to a point where you realise that all of this kind of stuff that's going on creates all these little cycles of problem and solution stuff in its own space. So all of these people who are interested in things, one example was something about the spread of tiger mosquitoes. Not really a problem here yet, apparently, uh, although apparently it's all moving in this direction. Um, but there are places out there in the Mediterranean where tiger mosquitoes are starting to spread. And so they need ways of tracking this. And so they're releasing very simple techniques for people to track data for tiger mosquitoes and to understand for themselves you know, where it's going, where the sort of population is spreading, and using that data to work out how to deal with the threat of tiger mosquitoes. And all of this kind of little stuff that's going on is actually dealing with the problems that matter to people and giving them the tools to do it for themselves. And I think there's a real opportunity in the scaling of smart cities to look at those cycles and to find a way to enable those cycles of interest in solving people's own problems and using that as the method of scaling up. So the thing is here to, to kind of follow this through, um, but think, what is the limit uh, of this scaling? What could people do? We've seen houses on WikiHouse. Uh, we have things like collective custom build. You know, what, what point do people start building the roads and the networks and the infrastructure that they require? And how might we enable that process? And how does that change how we plan in the future? So I think this idea of there's no limit to what people can scale up themselves is a really important aspect of this. And finally, 
Uh, this is kind of a whole thing about meeting in the middle. Um, you know, we need the top down. We need to uh, find a way to stimulate the bottom up and think about the challenge how we meet in the middle between this kind of planning and infrastructure thing that we need around smart rural, smart everywhere, and bottom up. And how design allows us to navigate the complexity of smart everywhere uh, and enables us to collaborate rather than close smart city initiatives off as isolated, defined areas. Uh, so this whole meeting the middle thing is really kind of, I think, the key thing in terms of how to take those things forward and scale them. Uh, and basically, that's it. <laughs>